Blog Talk Radio. Hello, I'm David Hester, and this is Live with David Hester. And today we're going to be talking about UFOs, aliens, fallen angels. Um, and I just want to make a point that it's been reported that there's 15 million people in the United States, and this is just the United States, that believe in UFOs, aliens, and life on other planets. And to me, that is a huge mission field. And today we have a guest with us uh, that will that that's on this mission field. But before I introduce our special guest, I would like to leave you with this. In Acts 17.11, we're given what's called the Berean Challenge. And it says that they were more noble than the Bereans, were more noble than those in Thessalonica because they received the word with all readiness of heart and searched the scriptures daily to find out whether these things were so. Today we have with us um, the author of the Unholy Communion, uh, the founder of the Delusion Resistance. The Bible says, and for this reason, God will send them a strong delusion that they should believe a lie. It says that in Second Thessalonians. So today we have uh, Brother David Rapino with us. Hello, and welcome to the show. Well, thank you, David. It's great to be here. Great to be with your audience, and I'm looking forward to a wonderful conversation. Oh well, I can't wait. I've been waiting for it, uh, waiting for it for a while now. Um, I've gotten a number of questions from uh, from people that listen to the show and so forth. So I'm hoping that um, we're going to have a great time. Uh, Amen. Just just a note, um, you're also uh, into the Hebraic roots. Is that right? Uh, yes. As a matter of fact, I am. Um, I uh, have. I'm a descendant uh, from the tribe of Judah through my uh, great grandmother on my father's side, and I'm also believe that uh, uh, from my Danish side, I, I come probably from the tribe of Dan too. So, yes, I am into the the Hebraic roots, and uh, and we, we one of the things that we promote is that uh, probably many of the Christians that are born again believers in in Yeshua, we call them Yeshua. Uh, are uh, probably descended from the lost ten tribes of Israel, if not if they're not from Judah directly. Um, so that's uh, that's our contention, and uh, there are some indications in the Bible to prove that this is true. Amen, amen. So you just used the name Yeshua. Could you explain that to us? Yes. Uh, all it is is the uh, the Hebrew way of saying Jesus. Uh, a lot of people don't realize that there's no J in the uh, in the Hebrew alphabet, and anything that's usually spelled with a J is usually starts with a Y in, in Hebrew. For instance, Jerusalem is uh, Yerushalayim, um, Joshua is Yehoshua, uh, so on and so forth. So uh, if anybody didn't know that already, there's a little Hebrew lesson you got for free. Amen. Amen. Well, uh, that's, uh, that's welcome here. Uh, this is a uh, program that studies quite a bit on Hebraic roots. Uh, one of our earlier shows, we had uh, Brother Brad Scott from Wild Branch Ministries um, sharing with us on the dietary laws and the uh, the restoration of the Hebraic roots. It, it was a real blessing. Yes, isn't it wonderful, too, that in, this, in these last days, so many people uh, are having a revelation, and it's been revealed to them by the Holy Spirit, that uh, they are actually... Uh, uh, descendants and um, and a lot of people are being told uh, outright uh, what tribes they come from too. It's it's really amazing to see this happen because someday we're all going to have to move back there. We feel and uh, might as well know uh, where our land's going to be when we go back, right? Well, amen, amen. You know, and even even if we don't know what tribe uh, we descended from, the fact is that when we uh, believe in Yeshua as the Messiah, uh, we are then welcomed into what's called the Commonwealth of Israel. So we we are Israel, Um, Mm -hmm. physically, spiritually, however we look at it, it, it's there. Yes, if you look at it, 
if you are familiar, if any listeners are, listeners are familiar with botany and um, the uh, the process of grafting into a tree, you know, you always have your root stock because uh, uh, the root stock is the, is the strong stock, and then you uh, you uh, graft in your uh, your other stock into it to become the tree. And and Paul talked about that uh, in, in scripture about how uh, we everybody is grafted into that tree. Um, and it's it's really remarkable when you look at the terminology that he uses, and 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 you see uh, how people have been doing it all through the centuries or, or the millennium, actually uh, grafting one tree into another um, to make a, a wonderful tree and uh, to produce a wonderful and uh, and godly fruit. Amen, amen. Um, you you run a website uh, called the Delusion Resistance. Uh, could you tell us about that? Yeah, um, the Bible says that in the end times, because people are going to be so wicked, God is going to send them a strong delusion. And we happen to think that, uh, although that uh, delusion is very uh, multifaceted, a big part of that is going to be the UFO uh, alien abduction of phenomena, along with evolution, and and both of those things are melded into one another, uh, and daily they're melding more and more into one another. Uh, because uh, evolution realizes that there's, there hasn't been enough time uh, the way that they see time uh, in all of uh, the universe to for evolution to have uh, evolved from from pond scum to uh, the human being, you know. And and so uh, since there's no time uh, for that, they they have to have something else. And so now they're going to the extraterrestrial uh, seed planting or panspermia theory where. Uh, you know, we were started by another race and, and everything. So uh, you're going to see more and more scientists going over to that. Um, to that. So anyway, uh, we started the delusion resistance just to inform people. Uh, two groups of people: the unsaved, of course, because they're out there searching, and also Christians, because um, Christian Christianity is being bombarded with these two um, philosophies, and they really don't have any answers. The, the church has ignored it for many years. Uh, uh, the church basically takes a stance, and when I mean the church, I mean um, the Christian church. I'm not referring to any specific denomination, um, but they they usually take a uh, ostrich head in the stand thing and hope something will go away. And you know, evil never goes away if you don't if you if you ignore it, it just gets stronger and stronger. And that's what's happened with the UFO phenomena, and especially the evolution. That uh, we had a fight against that back in the 1920s, and won a shallow victory, and thought it would go away. And uh, look what's going on today. It's being taught in all the schools as uh, as uh, gospel, actually. And uh, right. so we just wanted to warn people about all this stuff, educate them, and, and so that they can go back with answers uh, into the world with answers, uh, and not look like a bunch of bumbling fools. We're told to be. Um, we're told to be smart and to have a, uh, a reason for our faith, to be ex- to be able to explain our faith in all different ways. And uh, if we can help people in two different areas to do that, then uh, we've been successful in what uh, Yahweh's uh, commissioned us to do. Amen. So yeah. you would consider yourself a part of the Christian faith as a whole? Uh, yeah. I, I When I see... Um, when I see the word Christian, I mean um, born again Christian, all true believers that are um, that have come to, to uh, Yeshua in faith, uh, believing that uh, He is the ultimate sacrifice for our sins, and that He is God Himself, and that the Father sent Him, and that uh, uh, as Scripture says, if you believe that Jesus died for you and, uh, and that He was risen from the dead, you're saved. You know, and and that's. Uh, uh, that's the uh, the crux of uh, the whole matter, <laughs> the crux of Amen. all of salvation, you know. But, Amen. Uh, yeah. Well, you know, messianic uh, believers so often get looked upon as as a cult, you know, or as some you know sort of we- weird fringe uh, group of Christianity and. You know, the reason that, that I asked the question I did was to establish the fact that you're not a weirdo. <laughs> you know, you, <laughs> you have, you know, you believe in the orthodox tenets of, of the Christian faith. And um, so, amen. Yes, amen, David. And, you know, so many times um, people, out of the goodness of their heart and concern, 
you know, especially um, Christians that don't realize uh, the messianic part of the faith, uh, they'll they'll go through great um, lengths to to because I, I like to keep the feasts, and we, and my wife and I, and we like to do our Passover seder, and and uh, we aside from this radio show today, we do absolutely nothing on Saturdays, and um, on you know, so we try to do that, and you know, so many times we've been told, oh, you're 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 living under the law. No, we were not living under the law. We're living under grace. But God did give certain ordinances to to people of Jewish heritage that they need to keep. Uh, if you look at some of the scriptures in um, in Leviticus, when it talks about the feast, he says you're supposed to keep this ordinance forever. Yeah. And forever to me means forever. <laughs> you know, it doesn't mean... <laughs> Jesus fulfilled many of those things, or all of it. He filled all of, fulfilled all of, of of the law and the prophets. Uh, but he 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 never said to stop uh, doing something that he he said to do forever. <laughs> so, oh, amen, amen. Well, you know they uh, they accused him of that very thing of of changing the uh, the Torah. And uh, in Matthew five, he said, "Think not that I've come to destroy the law or the prophets. I've not come to destroy, but to fulfill. For verily I say unto you, until heaven and earth pass away." Not one jot or one tittle shall pass in the law till all be fulfilled. Amen. Amen. Right. And it's funny right. because the very same Christians that will will, will uh, berate uh, someone like me or you of trying to keep the feast or, or um, you know, keeping kosher or whatever, um, because Jesus fulfilled the law, and he did, and they're right in saying that, but they're the very same Christians that will... That'll berate you if you don't give your ten percent in church every every Sunday, you know. And and uh, when you remind them that Jesus fulfilled all the law in their eyes and in their minds, many of them, uh, he did fulfill all the law ex- uh, except for that one. That's the that's the one we have to keep, you know. <laughs> and, and that always perplexed me, Dave. It really did. Oh yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, so you wrote this book called Unholy Communion. Mm-hmm. And I have not completed it, but I'm a good way through it, and I've thoroughly enjoyed what I've read so far. Praise the Lord. And uh, how? why is this book important for our Christians, believers, and unbelievers today? Um, well, that's a, boy, that's a multifaceted question. I'll try to answer that one um, pretty quick. But uh, it, it's important because... Like I said, there's so many people that think that this thing is just going to go away, and it's not. It's going to get bigger and bigger, and it has over the years, and and more and more people are being deceived. And, and even if you walk into um, – you can walk into any church. I will say that categorically. Any church, you will find at least 20% of the people in those churches that believe that there are aliens, and, and I would say about half of those people believe that there are friendly aliens. And and that's kind of worrisome because these these entities aren't aliens; they're fallen angels, and um, and all this activity is demonic. And and uh, so I wanted to educate the people um, as to who these who these entities really are. You know that what their message is totally antichrist. Um, they're not the good guys that are here to uh, um, help us get to a different vibration level or something like that. They're here to uh, enslave us they're here to uh, uh and they will be here also to in a physical form i believe during the time of the uh the great tribulation to uh to manipulate mankind and to destroy mankind because satan hates mankind mankind was created as a holy um, a holy vessel for 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 yahweh in in the garden of eden until he fell you know and um uh, and Satan wants nothing more than to uh, take as many souls with him as he can. And when I see the souls in the in the, uh, in the Christian church um, professing that these beings are good and that they're coming back to uh, to do God's work, well, not the not our God, maybe the God of this world, <laughs> um, that kind of worries me. And also, you know, we see uh, if if you watch television to any extent, um, you could see in a week's time. Uh, 20 or 30 programs, if you have satellite or something, uh, on UFOs and on alien abductions. And and while they don't ever come to any clear conclusions, they still put the thought into people's minds that these things are real. Um, by asking questions, they create answers, if that makes any sense. They uh, they create sort of a religion. Um, what did Paul say that uh, um, faith is the... Uh, help me out with this one, Dave... <laughs> 
Um, the substance is being seen. The substance being the evidence, for it, evidence of things not seen. Exactly, yes. And that's what a faith is, and that's what people that believe in UFOs have. You know, they, they've they never seen one. They've never actually touched one, most most people, you know, uh, but they believe in them, and there's there's a there's a, a church hierarchy. You know, there's the the entities themselves that are the deities. There's the um, the prophets, which are the people that are going all over the country at these different UFO conferences promoting these things. There's the evangelists. Many of those people are the same thing. Um, you know, so just like there's a um, uh, there's the offices of the Holy Spirit in the church. There's the offices of the uh, Antichrist in this uh, UFO movement, and they'll swear to you up and down that they're not they're not a religion, but boy, they sure act like one. And they, you know, the old phrase, if it walks like a duck and quacks like a duck, then it's probably a duck, right? <laughs> right, right. Um, and so, if I can help them to understand that what they're getting into is really a religion, um, maybe some of them will come out of it. Because if you if you can show people that they they're already religious, especially secular atheists, if you can show them, hey, you. You know, you're already religious. You're just a member of the wrong religion. Now, now, why don't you just come over to the right faith, and and everything will be okay. You know, so if you know, we try to establish that. So those are our the two people that we try, the two audiences, excuse me, that we try to um, to reach, and uh, pretty successfully sometimes. Um, uh, we do have uh, new agers that uh, that are kind of messed up, and uh, they. Um, they want to they want to believe part of the truth but not all of the truth but uh if if they believe at all that scripture is true we present i present uh plenty of scriptures in the book that show that um that these things are uh, have been here they're fallen angels and that they're uh they're uh, a bunch of bad guys that are trying to take over the world if you if you think that adolf hitler was a bad guy and mussolini and and Pol Pot, well, you haven't seen anything yet. That's that's uh, what we want to warn people about, Dave. Amen. So what you're saying is that you uh, consider the UFO alien abduction uh, phenomena is real, but oh, yeah. they're not aliens per se. Uh, they're the heavenly hosts, the uh, the fallen angels, uh, watchers, rulers of the darker powers of this world. Uh, those guys. Yeah, exactly. And you know, Jesus told us, excuse me, Yeshua, I use that term, uh, those terms interchangeably, okay, so during the conversation. <laughs> he told us, uh, in Matthew 24 and also in Luke, that, um, that it's gonna be like the days of Noah when he returns. And, you know, either Jesus is a liar or he's telling the truth. Well, I, you know, I know in my heart he's telling the truth, so. I got to look at that and say, what were the days of Noah like? You know, well, before the days of Noah, um, the fallen angels, uh, approximately 200 of them, uh, came down and uh, had uh, relations with women and produced um, offspring that were called the giants or the Nephilim. Now, a lot of people have a hard time believing that, I, and I understand that because of the sons of Seth theory and, and everything else, but. Uh, uh, if Jesus said it was going to be like the days of Noah, then uh, you have to ask yourself, okay, if, if if this is the days of Noah today, we're, we're the sons of death, so they don't exist anymore. Uh, so you have to say, okay, so you have to go to the other scenario and say uh, it is fallen angels. And and so if that activity went on before the flood and our, our Lord and, and God said that um, it's going to happen just before he comes back, then, you know, it doesn't take rocket science to figure out what's going on. And then when you see these things um, coming and taking away uh, taking away people and then taking away their uh, um, the, the human ovum from the woman and then the uh, seed from the men, um, what are they doing? You know, uh, it's obvious that uh, some kind of restriction went into place uh, after the cross, and they're not able to do what they did before before the flood, and even during the time of Joshua, and maybe even up to to the time of our Lord. But um, they're doing it more in a, in a clinical uh, setting now, and doing the same thing they did before. Uh, people have to realize that demons like to have to uh, have to possess a body. Uh, they're spirits. They're not uh, flesh and bones like we are. And um, what better way to, to, to take over the human race or to um, to annihilate the human race than to create a race of, uh, for Satan to create a race of his own by, uh, by dare I say, um, forming uh, 
lifeless bodies that demons can inhabit and then uh, become part of the population. My goodness, that's I know that's a scary thought, and maybe some people listening are even quaking in their boots right now. But, um, you know, Jesus said perilous times were ahead, and uh, by golly, they're here. That's it. He said it, and you believe it, huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, so let, let's talk about the uh, Sethite theory. Um because that that comes up frequently, and you know they the the proponents of the Sethite theory say that the sons of God were actually the righteous line of Seth, and that the daughters of men are somehow the ungodly line of Cain. And I don't know how that the, how they make these distinctions, um, but well, the thing that has always stood out to me is that. The offspring were all giants. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. See, and that doesn't happen today. If a believer and an unbeliever gets married, no giants are produced. Right, right. They they might have monsters, but they're not giants. Right, um, right. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's it's the reason that it's it's such an accepted thing is um the angel theory was believed up until probably about the 3rd century AD and that's when um all the um the uh people that would later become the uh Roman Catholic Church got together and decided hey what's going to be in the bible and what's not and there had been a theory going around back then about the sethites um and so what they did is they just kind of omitted that uh the Book of Enoch, which was scripture actually up until that time uh, and believed to be a scripture, uh, they eliminated it because it told the truth. <laughs> and uh, sure. so, um, anyway, uh, you, you pretty well explained it. You know, they said that um, it's the righteous line of Seth. Um, however, um, like I said, where, where's the line of Seth today? Because Jesus said it's supposed to be just like it was before the days or during the days of Noah. So um, I would rather believe my Lord than uh, to believe um, a fabrication. Uh, I, I mull through my mind a lot of times why people believe uh, the, the sons of Seth thing. First of all, pastors believe it because that's what they're taught, and when they go to seminary, right. um, you know. And, and why why would you want to doubt what's coming out of your professor's uh, mouth if if he professes to be a, a man of God and everything? And you can't blame somebody for for believing what they're taught in school. Um, and a lot of them haven't really gone in, gone in to look at it because it hasn't come up before. Uh, when we spoke in Roswell in 2000, well, I didn't speak in 2005, but I was part of a roundtable discussion, uh, myself, Joe Jordan, and um, Jim Wilhelmson. And one of the people that was sitting there was an older gentleman, and he, the question that he raised is, why isn't the church bringing this up? And, and I go into that in the book quite extensively, and part of it is because they don't know. They they don't know and and some of them don't want to know. Um, they don't want to uh, um, disturb the established order, so to speak. Um, and you got to realize too that the, this this whole thing is it sounds freaky. You know, if if you take a, um, a church that you know just going every Sunday, um, everything's peaceful, everything's beautiful, and everything, and then you present to them this this. Uh, this fact about the fallen angels and stuff, you're going to get uh, loose on maybe a quarter of your people, and they may be the people that um, are the the heaviest uh, contributors to the church, so to speak. And when the church has a mortgage of uh, maybe, you know, when, they, when they've got a, a 2 or $3 million mortgage, you know, and uh, they can't afford to do that. So maybe maybe that's the reason why. And, and I propose a lot of maybes in this because I think there's a lot of different factors involved and. In, and I don't want to um, uh, focus on any one factor, and I really don't want to throw any, around any condemnation of pastors and stuff like that because they believe what they believe because it's either what they've been taught or, or you know they haven't investigated. But um, anyway, um, like I said, the, the book of uh, Enoch pretty well explains this, and a lot of people knock the book of Enoch uh, that it's not scripture, it's not canon. Well, it's a good history book, just like Josephus and. Uh, and Philo are, you know, those books are uh, readily accepted. And the fact that um, Jude, um, Jesus' brother, actually, quotes from it, um, and and, uh, and the book of Jasher is quoted also, uh, even mentioned in um, in Scripture. 
So uh, these books have some validity, and they and they uh, go into explain uh, a lot of things uh, to fill in the gaps, sort of, so to speak, you know. And and um, I think it's important to study those books to um, and then weigh all the evidence. You know, you can't just go one way or the other. You have to weigh the evidence according to what Scripture says, because Scripture backs up Scripture. And um, and also, if you look at the word um, um, "sons of God," which is in Genesis six. Um, the only time it's ever mentioned in the Bible is, I believe, in Job, and one other place I can't remember off the top of my head, and it always means angels um, it, in, the, in the Old Testament. Now, in the New Testament, uh, sons of God denotes uh, what uh, we're becoming through through the blood of Jesus and our testimony in our lives here on earth. But uh, in the Old Testament, or the Old Covenant, it, or the Torah, let's just say that, it uh, it always denotes angels. So um, you know if if you do a little bit of studying, uh, people will find out uh, that uh, it is actually angels and, and not these sons of Seth. Um, I hope I answered your question. I know sometimes I go off on little tangents, so uh, That's forgive okay. me if I did. Okay. Yeah. But you know I I can hear people now listening to the show saying, but angels neither marry nor are given in marriage. So Jesus disproved y'all's theory. Ah, yes, I know, I like that one too. And you know what, they're right, the angels of heaven. The scripture says the angels of heaven neither marry or are given in marriage. However, you've got to realize that the uh, the fallen angels are no longer in heaven anymore. Um, uh, they gave up their first estate, scripture says. Uh, and when you give up your, your heavenly clothing, and that's what that estate means, it actually means that they gave up their heavenly clothing, they took on um, their... Uh, the characteristics of linear time. And one of the characteristics of linear time here on earth is that is procreation because we constantly have to uh, renew our, each species or excuse me, each kind has to renew itself all the time where it perishes. Um, so the angels that fell are not like the angels of heaven anymore. And after the cross, we, we firmly believe that after the cross is when, or at the cross is when the the uh, the big, the big uh, war happened uh, in heaven that Jesus talks about, and uh, that Satan was cast down to the earth. And uh, cast down means that he was actually thrown down to the ground. Um, uh, so you know, they're, they're, a lot of their attributes, a lot of their heavenly attributes, are taken away. So yes, the angels of heaven do not do not have uh, sexual relations. That's true. But uh, when when you give up your um, when you give up your rights to your heavenly uh, abode, then, then things change, just like they did with Adam and Eve. We don't know if Adam and Eve would have had uh, children in the Garden of Eden. Scripture doesn't say whether they would or not. Uh, but afterwards, God tells them to be fruitful and multiply. So, um, and then because you know, they lost their glory too, you know. So right. it's easy to see that when when you don't have your your heavenly glory anymore, that that your characteristics change and. And uh, it's quite possible that, uh, and we believe that uh, that's what happened. And uh, and what what better way? Because you know, if you look at at uh, the first uh, before the flood, the uh, the patriarchs, the righteous patriarchs. If you look at the root words to their names and their meanings, um, you know, Adam means man. Um, you go on and on. I have this in the book also. But uh, what it would have plays out to read it plays out to read like this uh, if you look at the names it says man is appointed appointed mortal sorrow but the blessed god shall come down and his death shall bring the uh, rest to many okay or it will bring many rest and uh, so there's the gospel message before the flood now i'm sure that the evil one knew about that you know he was able to decipher that pretty easy because he's pretty smart. I hate to give him credit, but you know what? He is smart. He's insane but smart. And um, so, what better way to try to corrupt God's plans to bring down the to come down to earth to uh, um, to bring rest to many than to corrupt his seed? You know, and he's not. He wasn't going to use the righteous line of Seth, Seth to corrupt the seed of mankind so that Messiah couldn't be born. You know, he was going to try to intervene himself. And, and Genesis 6 also says that it happened afterwards, too. So he tried again after after the flood. He tried again. And we see this um, when Joshua and Caleb with the other ten went into the land, the spies, and they came back and they said, there's giants in the land. And when we were, when we were next to them, we were like grasshoppers in their sight. 
You know, right. that's pretty. That's a pretty big guy right there. You know, and, and there were no sons of Seth after after the flood. So, except for Noah and his offspring, you know, and they were all all righteous according to what the Word of God says. So, there's another proof that it wasn't the sons of Seth. Right. Well, you know, it, 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 here's my thing. If the line of Seth was so godly, why did they rape the women from the line of Cain? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah, they. it says that um, back in the, oh, I can't remember. I think it was uh, Kenan. When Kenan was born, that's when men began to um, call upon the name of the Lord, is how it's written in King James. But if you look at that, <coughs> it, it actually means that's when men began to profane the name of the Lord. <clears throat> and that was before the angelic activity, by the way, because that happened during the time of Jared. So, um, anyway, so even before um, all, all this activity happened with the sons of God and the daughters of men, men were profaning the name of the Lord, and those men were the sons of Seth, not just the sons of Cain. Um, the whole world had become polluted. And if you look at Enoch, um, whole, he was evangelizing the whole world, according to that book. And um, at one time, I guess, he, he had won over most of the world. Uh, but then upon his um, departure, they decided to become wicked and evil again. So it's uh, it's man's, man's um, um, destiny to be wicked. The Bible says that <clears throat> uh, the heart of man is... Um, Desperately wicked and evil upon uh, and anything you can imagine. That's a paraphrase. Um, right. So, <laughs> yeah, like you said, uh, yeah, if they were such good guys, how come they had to rape the women? And how come they um, they couldn't just uh, walk up to the fathers and say, you know, we're righteous. We want to marry your daughter. I think any any right. father would say, okay, good. Here, yeah, my daughter's in good hands. Here, take her. <laughs> you know. Right. So, yeah. <laughs> Uh, it's it's amazing. So many things come to my mind, and then they jump out as, as we're doing these talks. But uh, um, you mentioned the Book of Enoch, and you know, uh, I was in a discussion on the uh, John Ankerberg uh, Facebook page uh, with somebody about the origin of demons, and I happened to mention the Book of Enoch. And I was automatically branded a heretic because I brought it up, you know. And I'm not saying that John Ankerberg uh, wouldn't read the Book of Enoch. I'm just saying that this particular person that was posting there <laughs> branded me a heretic. And I mentioned, you know, that it was considered canon since the time of Christ in the uh, in the Ethiopian Bible. Mm-hmm. And, and um, you know, I, I thought that, that was very important. And the fact that, you know, Jude quoted from it and, you know, the 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 title of Jesus, uh, Son of Man, I think is a, a direct prophetic reference to the book of Enoch. You know, there's, exactly. there's, so, there's so much, so at least for linguistic purposes, we can read that book. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and historical <laughs> you know? purposes, too. Yeah. Right, right. Mm-hmm. So, uh, amen. Yeah. You know, like I said, you know, it's, um, the people that berate us for reading the book of Enoch are the same people that have absolutely no problem go running to Josephus, who who was a, a Jew and an unbeliever, and to Philo, who I don't even know if he was Jewish. I think he was a, a Roman, just a regular Roman historian. Uh, they'll run to those two books for for a history lesson, but the the minute that you go to the, the you mentioned the book of Enoch for history lesson, you know, all of a sudden. <laughs> You know, it's uh, they they shake the dust off the, their shoes and they walk away. Well, I'm sorry, but you know, as long as it meshes with Scripture, as long as it doesn't violate what's in Scripture, then um, I think it's um, it's pretty pretty good uh, source for for the historical. And um, and you know, if you look if you read further into it, he explains a lot of things. Uh, um, he explains uh, the circuits of the sea and the circuits of the air, how the how the um, the winds blow from from one direction to another. So he was talking about the jet stream, and he was talking about currents in the oceans and everything else, and um, and describing them with with quite a bit of accuracy too. So um, you know, it's <laughs> it's it's a fantastic book to read. Again, I don't take it as canon, you know. As though, although a lot of uh, 
a lot of people did uh, three anywhere from 300 years before the birth of Messiah to 300 years after. Um, but I do take quite a bit of interest in it, in it, and also Jared and the and the Testament of the Patriarchs and. Uh, um, there's one other, but that's about where I draw the line. There, there are some books out there that uh, that are dangerous. Uh, um, the Gospel of Thomas, being one of them, is a is a, a very bad book. Um, and some of them you can read, but you got to take with a grain of salt, you know. So um, I don't know. I think that sometimes people are uh, um, afraid to afraid to study for themselves. And and you know what's sad, David, is that. Um, for centuries after after the death of uh, Christ or Messiah and uh, after the birth of uh, the Nicolaid in the church uh, around 300 uh, and Constantine and everything, um, the Bible was restricted to only the uh, the elites, the uh, the upper crust, the church, the priests, the kings, and everything, and and the uh, the lesser man couldn't read it and and over the centuries uh, so much blood was spilled so that we could have scripture. On our on our um, on our tables, you know, not up on the shelf, but on our tables, and people don't want to get into it and read it. They would rather sit there and have it explained to them, just like during the time when the Bible wasn't uh, accessible. Um, God uh, tells us to to uh, study to show ourselves approved, you know, and to and like you said with the Bereans, checking everything with Scripture. Now, how are you going to do that if you don't read the Bible, you know? Um, <laughs> So it's it's real frustrating because the same people that that deem us heretics um, for reading uh, passages in Enoch haven't cracked their Bible open in uh, you know five, six, or twenty years to to see what's true and what's not true. You know, it's frustrating. <laughs> right? Yeah, I mean, you're right. Um, we mentioned uh, in, in one of our. Uh, one of your answers, you talked about the uh, the seed line of Christ, and uh, you, you kind of hinted to the uh, seed of Satan, and that's something that a lot of people don't realize in, in Genesis 3.15, that, yeah, that's the first prophecy of Messiah, but it also mentions that Satan has a seed line as well. Yeah. Yeah, it does, and uh, you know, there's a lot of different uh, things that come into play with that. Um, some some people think, and I do not believe this, that that. Um, well, let me back up just a, just a tad here. Um, some people think that uh, that Adam had another wife before Eve, named Lilith, and that uh, he had relations with her, and that's where the seed line came in from Satan. Uh, some people think that. Um, uh, that Satan had uh, relations with Eve, and that's where Cain came from. He was the evil line, and and the Bible does say that that Cain was evil. But if you look at the names of some of his descendants, you see the word El at the end of it, uh, which means that he must have had some regard for God to, to name his children that, those names. But uh, but we also got to remember that all of his uh, descendants died in the flood. Um, there's only um, what uh, eight people that came through the flood. Okay, and and so what my theory is that um that this stuff perpetuated again after the flood and and the bible backs it up says that there were giants in the land and after that and that um that the angels were allowed to do it the ones that were not chained up that is in tartarus were allowed to do it again um and they did and uh, some of those people did survive um where they went uh we don't know uh some speculate that the Philistines were one of those uh, descendants from one of those um, encounters and, and and things like that. But, um, yes, I do believe that there are two seeds. Um, I don't believe, like I said, that uh, that there was any hanky-panky uh, between um, Eve and Satan or anything before the flood. Um, a good friend of mine uh, speculates that... Uh, the descendants of Cain uh, went into the, the the inner earth at during the time of the flood and were protected there, and then came out afterwards. Um, and that they're the uh, the uh, line of uh, the, the second seed. Um, he may be right. I don't know, but I, all I do know is that there is another seed, um, and that um, that they've been actively involved in trying to corrupt uh, the word of God and, and and God's mission. But you know. <laughs> 
the, the master and creator of the universe always has a way to uh, uh, to, to um, thwart those plans and also or also to turn those plans around so that uh, he can use them for his glory. <laughs> you know, um, one 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 instance would be when uh, Pharaoh um, was going to kill all the babies in um, um, in Egypt. And God said, "Ah, oh, no, that's not going to happen. As a matter of fact, I'm going to turn around this whole thing around, and all of your firstborn are going to die." You know, so that pretty well put an end to Pharaoh's plan of killing all the baby Jews um, during the time of Moses' uh, birth. Uh, excuse me, during the time of the Exodus. I'm sorry. And um, so, anyway, uh, yeah, I do believe that they're around and that they're active. Uh, I, I would go out on, on a little bit of a limb and say, uh, if you look at our political condition these days uh, here oh. in the states, yeah, <laughs> that perhaps they're they're uh, becoming more and more active. But I'm just going to leave it there. Um, right. Yeah. People can take that as they want. But um, anyway, that hope that answers your question. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Um, you know, a scripture that comes up a lot when. Uh, when uh, talking about this topic and searching it out in Scripture is in the book of Daniel where it says they will uh, mingle themselves with the seed of men. Yeah. Uh, and it's talking about the, uh, you know, the final kingdom of the beast. And, uh, you know, and a lot of, you know, and it, it's my belief that, you know, of course the Antichrist will be Satan's seed. He'll, he'll, he'll be a Nephilim or a Gaborim. Right. You know, mm-hmm. and uh, it'll probably include some kind of cloning or a hybrid or something. Right. Could you elaborate on that a little bit? Um, yeah, well, I, I, I totally believe that. Um, yeah, I... <laughs> it's... it's um, I This is my the scenario that I see in, in, in that is that... Um, yeah, I, I, I agree with you totally. He's probably going to be a Gaborim, because they were the men of old, the mighty men of valor. And um, uh, whether there's there's some people that speculate that, uh, and a good friend of mine, um, Jim Wilhelmson, uh, thinks that, um, and he could show you in scripture too, uh, pretty convincingly that uh, that uh, there will be some kind of cloning of uh, of uh, Adolf Hitler that'll come back as. Uh, um, uh, as a man of peace this time, but uh, really as a ravening, wolf, ravi- ravaging wolf, you know, in, in disguise. Right. Um, uh, yeah, but I do believe that um, uh, that a lot of the uh, that he, that he will be uh, the Antichrist will be, um, and I believe it'll be accompanied by probably the arrival of a lot of uh, what people term to be flying saucers and a lot of alien activity too. I have no trouble believing that in the end days that there'll there'll actually be uh um, like I said Nephilim uh that that'll be actually be uh, the police force roaming the earth and the whole nine yards. Uh the Bible says that uh, uh the antichrist will war against the saints and he'll prevail against us. You know, he's actually going to win. <laughs> uh, physically in the physical realm, not in the spiritual realm because we're all going to come back and uh defeat him and uh with Jesus and uh send all those guys packing but um uh yeah I do believe uh that uh our future leader here on earth is going to be a uh a foreign agent uh from the enemy a, a nephilim or a gaborim yeah was that your question Dave I kind of got yeah uh, yeah, yeah something oh, okay. like that just just to elaborate on those uh on those concepts yeah and you did um so, what really would be is is the purpose of this whole uh, UFO um, alien facade? Well, the the first purpose would be with the alien abductions would be to create a race of uh, beings that can be inhabited by the spirits of the uh, the giants. Um, the second one um, would be a, a great deception. Um, you, when I was young, I'm, I'm 51 years old right now. When I was young, it seemed like everybody went to church, even if they weren't very ardent believers. At least they went to church every Sunday. And and now you don't see anybody going. Now, why is that? Um, it's because uh, they've been bombarded for the last 40 or so years with uh, 
movies, um, articles in, in the newspapers and in magazines, um, television shows, uh, uh, stuff like that, talking about the, the possibility of, um, of aliens. Now, if you've got a bunch of people that, that, that have no faith, um, but the human heart is always craving faith, okay, <laughs> even if it's um, not faith in Jesus, they're, they're always looking for a savior, for somebody that, That'll um, pull us out of uh, the situation. That'll that'll heal, cure cancer, and, um, and and heal all sicknesses and everything else. And and uh, people uh, tend to be the the kind of creatures that like to uh, they're touchy feely. They they won't believe in something that they can't see, um, unless it's a UFO, of course, and they have no trouble. But um, so the deception is uh, to to cause people to take their eyes off of. Uh, Yeshua and place their eyes on something that they can actually feel and touch and, and they probably will someday. Um, I did a little study a few years ago about um, UFO sightings at the same time that um, major um, prophetical events happen or Christian revivals and, and you wouldn't, well maybe you wouldn't be surprised but um, for instance uh MUFON did, did me a favor. By the way, I wanted to tell you, I don't belong to MUFON anymore. We could talk about that in a little while if you want. But, um, yeah. so we're uh, running down to like the last uh, 14 minutes. Okay. Okay. Um, well, anyway, um, well, we're, we're, okay. So, you know, they got the their eye, everybody's eyes off of Jesus. Nobody's looking at Jesus anymore. So they come in and they, they kind of slip themselves right into society and uh, and bring the new age faith with them, which they always um, always preach, and um, so that's that's the basic uh, reason for all this stuff going on. Uh, we've got a godless society that's looking for something to believe in. They don't want to believe in God, our God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, because you know they they see him as a, a rugged taskmaster for some reason, because Satan has always painted him that way. And uh, unfortunately, they believe him. Um, but uh, so they're going to slip themselves in as uh, wonderful, uh, caring peacemakers and, and caretakers and everything else. But uh, um, the Bible says nothing's for free. Um, if you want to work, you got to eat uh, and stuff like that. However, our society is a society where we want stuff for free. Uh, we got um, government offering us stuff for free all the time now, and. Uh, uh, the Bible says that the uh, the uh, borrower becomes servant to the lender, and uh, and the government knows this, and and the world knows this, and the aliens know this. So there, uh, all this technology that we have nowadays, uh, that uh, even my uh, grandfather's uh, generation would see as fantastic, you know, all of a sudden it's springing in on us, you know, um, leaps and bounds. Uh, that's what happened before the flood. Uh, they were given technology, taught how to use swords and shields and how to make them and and how to uh, make medicines out of roots and herbs and, and stuff like that. So, uh, yeah, they're they're uh, they're offering us a plate of food, but what they don't people don't realize is that the plate is uh, probably uh, 99 percent bad food, but with a whole bunch of good tasting preservatives in it, and it's going to kill them. <laughs> that is the uh, the basic premises of what we're trying to tell people. Don't fall for the lie. Um, uh, although you can't see Jesus right now, he's real, and uh, he's going to come back. And uh, if you're cleaving to this un unholy communion re religion, um, it's going to be bad for you. Just uh, for the Christians, uh, hang in there, have faith, and, and for the unbelievers, come to Jesus before it's too late. That's that's our premise. Amen. Amen. Uh, so, so one last question: Do you believe that a Christian can be abducted? I believe that a Christian can be abducted if they will it to be. Okay. Now, there was the Andreessen affair that happened, uh, I think, about twenty or twenty-five years ago now, where a, a, Christ, a woman who purported to be a Christian was abducted. But um, if you read carefully into the uh, the notes and everything that were written about it. They finally they they worn her down, and they they uh, made her an offer, and she accepted. Okay, if you if they come around wanting to uh, wanting to take you, and or if they come around with uh, uh, promises that you'll be something special to the world or something, and 
well, people need to tell them to go away, to get away in Jesus' name, because uh, you have no business with them, you know. So a Christian could be abducted if if they if they get themselves to the point where they uh, they're given an offer and they accept it. Um, but I'll tell you what, um, a lot of Christians, and written in my book, and it's all over the internet too, and our websites and stuff have been approached and they tell these things to get away in Jesus' name. They tell them that they're covered by the blood of Yeshua, um, <clears throat> that, um, uh, you know, basically um, telling them to take a hike in Yeshua's name, and they and they leave each and every time. Um, there, we've had some people that have told us they were Christians and that Jesus' name didn't work, but when you, when you question them and find out about their lives, you find out they're basically into the New Age and, and uh, they believe in a Christ consciousness, not a Jesus. And um, when they tell um, these things to take a hike, they just get bothered even more because um, it would be like um, equivalent to a, a, a Jew in Nazi Germany asking the Gestapo for assistance, you know. <laughs> um, asking the enemy to protect you from the enemy is uh, is never going to work. So, uh, Amen. That's what we feel. Amen. So aliens are not your friend. I, I want to, uh, to leave us with a couple of scriptures. And um, it says um, in, in Galatians 1.8, I believe, it says, Though we or an angel from heaven teach any other gospel to you than that which we have taught, let him be accursed. Mm-hmm. Okay? And yeah. um, so... These these aliens, these angels, are the enemy. You know they, they are the uh, the Bible says careful when you entertain strangers because in so doing you've entertained angels unaware. Uh, so many times we interpret that to mean only good angels. Uh, however, we're learning today that the opposite can also um, be true, and uh, it says in uh, in Hebrews two five. For he's not put the uh, the world to come of which we speak in subject to aliens or to angels. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, I just I think that uh, these scriptures are, are important for us to uh, to remember. It, it says um, also though that Paul said he was convinced that neither death nor life, angels or demons, present or future, powers height, depth, anything in all of creation would be able to separate him from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. And that, that is the, uh, that's the point of this whole show, is to show you that no matter what's going on in this world, that Yeshua is king. He's Lord. He, he, can, he can rescue us <laughs> from... Not only this world, but the damnation of hell. That's right. And you know, it's it's just it's so it's just so uh, so true. And you know, it just means uh, means so much to me um, that we can um, get this message out. Now we have uh, had six minutes left, okay? And uh, in that six minutes, you, you've written a book. You you have a website. You uh, you work with uh, other people. Uh, if somebody's having an abduction experience or they need counseling or whatever, um, give us all of that information. Okay, yeah. Well, we I work with a, closely with an associate, Jim Wilhelmson, and um, we were the uh, Alien Abduction Crisis Centers of America, but then we realized that it's not just in America and also that um, the paranormal uh, – like ghosts and poltergeists also fits into this mold too. So we changed the name of the ministry to the Paranormal and Alien Abduction Problem Solvers International. And if you use the first letters of each one of those words, it comes up to be PAPSI. That's, uh, um, so the website is www.paapsi.org. Um, and that's our, our um, counseling site. Um, we, we're glad to take calls or emails from people and, uh, both Jim and I have uh, unlimited access here in the United States with our phones, and and I also can call several countries with uh, with my phone service too. Um, we'd be glad to help anybody that wants to call in, or, and also we we uh, 
we also accept people that want to help us too. But you know, they have to be born again Christians and no spiritual warfare and stuff like that. Um, the book website um, is is real simple. It's uh, unholycommunion.info, uh, where you can get info about the book. Um, places where you can buy it. There's <laughs> It's being sold all over the world, actually. So um, on that yeah. site, you can you can see uh, all the places where you can buy it all around the world. Um, and um, we also have a chat room. We meet on Mondays and Thursdays where we um, we talk to people, and um, you know we have some regulars that we all come in and chat. It's kind of like a little mini church, uh, and uh, you can find that on um, Pal Talk, and that's uh, the Remnant Call. Um, and of course, there's my uh, the, the first website I started was the uh, Delusion Resistance, and it's Delusion Resistance. That's one word. Uh, dot org, and those are our websites. And uh, you come to any one of them, and they all link to each other. And and um, we'd be glad to uh, fellowship with people, to help people, to talk to people. Um, all are welcome. Okay, <laughs> we very rarely turn away anybody, but. Um, we're just here to do what uh, Yeshua wants us to do, and uh, he's, he's anointed us to do uh, some really special work, and uh, he's anointed us so that we love doing this work, and and uh, we welcome everybody. So please uh, come visit us. Um, you can Google us. You can do anything you want. Uh, you'll find us, and um, we'll be glad to chat with you. Well, amen. And that was David Rufino of the Delusion Resistance. Uh, on his website, um, there's also MP3 files that you can listen to. It's a connection to the Papsi website. There is so much information on this web page uh, that I'm, I'm going to repeat the uh, address again. It's www.delusionresistance.org, uh, D-E-L-U-S-I-O-N-R-E-S-I-S-T-A-N-C-E.org. Uh, I invite everybody to go there, check it out. His book, The Unholy Communion, uh, what I have read so far has been excellent. Uh, so everybody, please, uh, please check that out. I'm David Hester, and, uh, this is the Live with David Hester, um, internet radio show. My bi- uh, Bible studies and website can be found at www.biblehealth101.com. Thanks so much for listening to us today, and thank you, David, for being on our program. Uh, Thank you so much for having me. It's been a real pleasure. All right. God bless you, brother. God bless you, too, now. Bye-bye.